Welcome back again. You're still watching us here on Nile Cruise and we are at M. Hotep's Museum in Sa'ara. And um, the Serapium of Sa'ara is without doubt um, one of the most enigmatic ancient sites, not only in Egypt, but in the entire world. It's one of the several antiquity sites Egypt has uh, renovated and reopened to boost tourism uh, around the world. The Serapium is also a vast underground necropolis south of Cairo that is dedicated to the bulls of Apis, which I have no idea what this is, but we're going to find out very soon. Um, now, the site consists of tunnels winding for three quarters of miles beneath the sand just north of the top pyramid of Zosser. So this is definitely something very interesting for us to find out today and to know exactly what these Serapiums are. And to shed further light on that, we are delighted to have joining us uh, Mr. Mahmoud Chabani, the North Ara Chief Inspector. Thank you very much for joining us. Joining us on that case. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, now, the Serapium, whose origin dates back to around 1400 BC, was discovered in 1851 by French Egyptologist Auguste Mariette, uh, founder of the first department of Egyptian antiquities. Talk to us, please, um, Mr. Chabin, about this Serapium, uh, when it was founded, who built it, and so on. Um, Sarabim is one of the most important uh, archaeological sites in Saqqara and it's very unique because of its nature. But before we talk about Sarabim, we have to talk about uh, worshipping the different kind of deities, uh, animals and birds and catacombs were built for these animals and birds here in Saqqara. The Egyptians, the ancient Egyptians, choose this kind of animals because of different reason, maybe they were afraid of kind of them, maybe because of abysses, uh, this animal uh, is famous for by this abysses, like we can say some examples for this. So the Egyptian choose bulls because, it's, uh, because of its strengths, lions, courage, uh, uh, ibis for uh, wisdom and sinus. Uh, so different kind, uh, also like Crocodiles in uh, in Esna in cats as well. Cats as well. Cats, yeah. yes. So, so this were very important for the Egyptian, for that they sacred some of this kind of uh, animals. Uh, as a part of this sacred, so they built tombs for these animals. Uh, most important places in Egypt here, we have uh, the Serapium, uh, which is built different places like in Alexandria and here in uh, Saqqara and also in Atfih, uh, it's South Giza. Uh, also, necropolis or catacombs were built for different kind of animals like baboons, uh, like I uh, ibis and like the cow mother called the Isium. It's like Cerebium, it's the Isium. Mm -hmm. So these uh, tombs were built actually uh, to uh, entomb this kind of animals. But the most important of them was the Cerebium of Saqqara. Uh, the Cerebium of Saqqara actually uh, started uh, the burial in this place during the time of Amn al-Hotib III from the 18th dynasty. Uh, so the tomb at, at this time it was built as a separate, not like what we see now. It was built as a, a chapel above the ground and a burial chamber were cut underneath. And this continued till the time of Ramses II. From the time of Ramses II, we can find the name of Ha'am Wasit. Ha'am Wasit. Ha'am Wasit was the son of Ramses II, was the high priest of Betah of Memphis. So we have a big relation between Betah of Memphis and uh, the sacred bull which was uh, entombed inside the Serapium the bull itself, because this bull was a kind of the incarnation of Betah himself. So there were different uh, conditions to uh, identify this animal to be the deity uh, uh, Abyss. Uh, the first one of them that they choose this uh, animal to be the first born for his mother, also to be in white color. Second, to be have some sign in its body, like uh, a sign of a scarab in its tongue, and also a, a big vulture in its back with a black uh, color in its tail. So, uh, the high or the priests who serve 
in the temple of uh, Abyss in Memphis, they were looking for these uh, descriptions of this animal everywhere in Egypt. After 14 years, uh, after the death, or they slaughtered uh, the chosen one at this time, after 14 years, they slaughtered and they mummified and then they uh, bury it in uh, the cerebrum. So first we have conditions to choose this animal. Second, what is the cerebrum? The cerebrum is the tomb for this sacred bull, which was the incarnation or the living image of Betah of Memphis. Mm -hmm. uh, so the cerebrum itself, like I told you, from the 18th dynasty, Rams Ramesside period, but with the big uh, scale started from the time of the 26th dynasty with Bismatic I, who start to cut the great gallery there and the tombs or the vaults on the two sides were dedicated for uh, the god Abyss. Yeah. Now, um, what, who was buried in the Serapium and, and, and what was found um, in the um, uh, Saqqara uh, tomb? The Serapium has 24 vaults inside in the two sides of the main uh, uh, gallery uh, uh, for 24 uh, animals were buried inside. In uh, 1851, the cerebrum was discovered by Mariette, and Mariette was the, uh, at this time, he came at the beginning to Egypt to collect some uh, Coptic manuscripts for uh, the Louvre Museum. But when he came to Egypt, he engaged in the work of the Egyptology. So he started to make excavation after he knew or someone told him about a statue in the area of the west of Saqqara. So he started to make excavation and he discovered uh, a sphinx. This sphinx was a part of uh, a root of sphinxes extend from the cerebrum till the uh, house of Abyss or the temple of mummification of Abyss at Memphis. Memphis, which was attached to the big temple or the great temple of Betah. When this animal died, they mummified its body during 40 days in the temple there. And then in this way, in a procession, they brought his body to bury it inside uh, the tomb itself. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, as you've said earlier, animals had representations or symbolism here in Egypt. Let's talk more about the symbolism or what the bull symbolizes in Egyptian ancient history. In general, bulls uh, is, uh, 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 have a symbolism of, uh, uh, of power or even the king, one of his titles, some of the kings have a title, the mighty bull. It's uh, uh, one of the most important. So it, uh, it shows us the, uh, the power and uh, how the king is very powerful and strong. So this is one of his, its episodes for this animal. But the most important for this, it was the, like I told you, it's the incarnation or the living image of one of the main god of the area of Memphis, Betah. So the animal was very important because of Betah was the main god of all of this area. Uh, so uh, Betah was uh, Uzir, a kind of have a kind of integration between the the two gods, and to have the god Serapis who was buried inside the tomb. Okay. Now, uh, why was the uh, our has been the Serapium? Uh, of Saqqara, uh, a continuous source of mystery, uh, you know, for, for years and, and, and years and speculation. Um, um, let me, you know, ask you not only why, but ca can you comment on that and some of the great myths or, uh, that were, were told about the Serapium? In, uh, in general, uh, archaeology is a field of mystery, you know, so it's very important to know that when we work in excavation and work in some field like this one, we are uh, exciting to know what, what we have. Uh, maybe we will work on something. Maybe it's like what we expect sometimes not. So uh, even in general, 
Well, Egyptology or archaeology have um, a lot of imagination mystery, and this has happened even till now by the Egyptian when they uh, heard about anything, so the, their imagination is working to what is there, yeah. I want to ask you something about, and I don't know if it's a myth or not, but it was something that was also very dazzling, the fact that when um, they discovered the tomb that it weighed, um, or the cover of the tomb had weighed more than 70 tons, if, I, if I'm correct, and how was that lifted, and how was how were the artifacts looted? So there's a lot of questions raising around this phenomenon. Maybe can you talk to us more about what do you suggest took place? So uh, we talk about an important god uh, and an important uh, deity, Surabis, the symbol of Betah. Uh, a big ceremony has happened at this time, uh, uh, sponsored by the king himself. So the king, when uh, they wanted to built one or to make a, a sarcophagus for one of them. So they had a uh, kind of permission from the king to cut it from uh, the royal quarries. Uh, supposed to be in, in good, very good condition because uh, it's a royal thing. So they cut uh, granite or basalt, which is very hard stone, very far away from here, more than 900, uh, 900 kilometers. So when they start to cut it from its quarries, so they took it through the Nile to bring it to maybe to the lake here uh, of Abu Sir, which is very close to the Serbium. And then by a kind of wooden rules and things like this, they took it through the desert, through the sand to the beginning of uh, the entrance. And then they filled the place with sand to transport it from a higher level to a lower level by removing the sand under. Then they start to pull it inside in these rules to enter to the vault and to, to prepare it. Mm. All right. Now, uh, uh, there is a theory that suggests that this site, uh, the Serapium, was used for the burial of, again, uh, the bulls, though there, there are many elements that do not add up with this theory. What, what, what do you think? Actually, it's very clear because of the evidence which you found and since from the time of uh, Marriott Basha and then also from the ex-minister uh, of antiquities, Dr. Muhammad Ibrahim, that everything is related to a piece, to the cerebrum itself, to be as a sacred tomb for a piece himself. Okay. Mm -hmm. I want to also ask you about the evaluation of the types of gods and worship practices that were highlighted in um, uh, this European's descriptions. Um, you know, how much history does it contain? Uh, and uh, because this is a very uh, precious art antiquity site, so particularly the Serapiums uh, here. Tell us more about the. Every, every detail that is missing out and that a lot of people are not aware of, especially um, when tourists come, I think that um, they're, before they visit, um, they have this impression and once they leave, there's another impression. So there's so much details that maybe is not put out in the light, if I may say, or not being shared by media, not being marketed to them before they come. Yes, there is a lot of stories about the Serbium even since from the time of Cambyses, from the 26th, the Persian king. So we have two stories about Cambyses. The first one that he, when he was at Memphis, that one day he found the Egyptians are celebrating by the pool. So um, against the Egyptians, this story said that it was against the Egyptians for that he slaughtered this pool and they cooked its meat. But we have the, we can say, uh, the royal statement is that Cambyses himself has an inscription inside the uh, uh, cerebrum and one of the uh, sarcophagus is inscribed by his name. So this means that he respects all the, the Egyptian de deities here, uh, especially the uh, uh, Betah of Memphis, because he was also he was settled or he was stayed uh, in Memphis. Uh, a lot of information uh, because uh, not a lot of people so they knew the, the, the main ideas or the general lines about the cerebrum but a lot of details still have inside uh, because the uh, cerebrum itself or North Saqqara in general the area of the cerebrum and the catacombs and round was the most important place at the last four centuries BC 
it was the main area of Saqqara. Everything was happened here, the catacombs, dedication from people uh, for uh, gods, building tombs, uh, 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 sacrifices, everything happened in this area in general at the last 4th century BC. So, a uh, lot of stores maybe in the future we have a lot to discover. Even we have uh, still um, discovers here in Saqqara showing us new things. Even like I told you, they sacred different kind of animals. But in the last excavation of general uh, director or general security of the Egyptian uh, Antiquities uh, Council, uh, they discovered uh, beetles, mummified beetles, mummified scarabs. Uh, 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 snakes or cobras. So this is very important to know. Even here in Saqqara we have the most important places at this period, of the late period, we have the Anubian and the Bubastion where the mission is working, where they discovered thousands of mummies of uh, cats and, and also we have here uh, all discoveries in Saqqara, thousands or hundreds of thousands of falcons, mummified falcons, also uh, jackals uh, and uh, the cow mother of Abyss, all of this is still, and our, the area around is still needs a lot of excavation. So we can't reveal all the secrets just once. It's, we need time. You know. So there are secrets. Yeah. Now we're more curious yeah. to know yeah, what yeah, are those secrets. Beauty, <laughs> yeah, that's the beauty of it, really. Uh, so uh, we, we know that um, the, the Serapium sarcophagi um, was made out of uh, uh, granite and not limestone, uh, which is a, a much easier material to work with. Can you tell us why? Yes, limestone is a common material here in Saqqara because we have two kinds of limestone used in Saqqara. The local one, which is not the same quality of a finer one, which you brought from Torah from the other bank of the Nile. Uh, but because I told you, because of the importance of this deity, uh, Abyss, uh, and also um, this is a kind of a royal work like we talked before, so the king gave the order to cut, to cut the most fine uh, stones to make the, the sarcophagus. So it's a very important uh, god for a very important, or incarnation for a very important god, Betah of Memphis. So everything made by the king, sponsored also by the king. So it's supposed to be of the finest of everything. Something different. We still have 10 minutes. Um, now, many who have visited the Serapium since it was open have noticed that there's no suit in, uh, that is present uh, in ceilings and walls. And of course, how would that explain the fact that it was very completely dark? And how was it even completed underground in this complete dark? We still have suit on the walls but it's mm -hmm. not very clear to see, because uh, uh, this is the way to, uh, to enlight inside using uh, Unless that's a secret that you don't want to reveal. <laughs> it looks like it, but we still want to know, though. <laughs> still, uh, you know, mm -hmm. have some remains, uh, because they used the uh, oil lamps to, to enlight inside. So uh, how they did it? So it's, uh, this is, uh, because, uh, you know, uh, soot mainly uh, find in some areas we find in Saqqara in very dark places, uh, in, in a very uh, thick uh, layer uh, because some of the Roman uh, for the Copts or for uh, the Christians they came and they escaped to the desert here in Saqqara they found some tombs and they were settled they used it for daily life so uh, but this is do doesn't happen for or didn't happen for the Serapium because the first uh, discovering of the Serapium, it was 1851 by Mariette and uh, how we know it was not uh, used for this because we found a lot of artifacts, a lot of steel inside uh, still on the wall so nobody entered uh, for a very very long time. Mm. Okay. Now sir, uh, uh, let's uh, uh, take a, um, uh, a wider scope and we want to know from you, uh, in your view, what is the most interesting, or what are the most interesting uh, stories about um, the Zoser Pyramid, the Saqqara area in general? 
Uh, actually, uh, Saqqara is a very important place. I was involved in the work of uh, the Steppe Permit Conservation Project for about four years. Uh, so started with Dr. Zaha Was and the team there. So the Steppe Pyramid um, is a very important place. So when we talk about it, we need um, hours and hours to talk. The Steppe Pyramid, you know, it's the main field in Saqqara, the most important because uh, from every everything started from the state permit a kind of uh, revolution happened in the field of construction and architecture by uh, you know by moving from the mud bricks and material organic material used at the building to have it in stone like around us you can see here in the museum the the columns, which looks like a bundle of papyrus. So nobody uh, teaches the Egyptian. The Egyptians teach themselves, by, but you know, by experience, doing and failing, succeeded. Yeah. So he, he, te he taught himself. But so we'll find even he, when they built the, uh, the colonnade there, he didn't build the colonnade as a freestanding columns. We can find that he supported Still, at the beginning, he supported it with a short wall to ensure it will be stay or stable. So, but by time, we can find he's a, he's a very, uh, very uh, careful or they were, uh, we can say they were clever to make columns with its crowns, uh, freestanding column with different shapes. So, everything started from the state pyramid mm -hmm. in the field of architecture. So speaking of that Egyptians taught themselves uh, for very long years and um, decades, um, they, when it comes to archaeology, they would depend on French and German archaeologists to help in discoveries, whether, I mean, even here in this museum as well uh, itself, it was a French archaeologist who worked for years. But today we see more young Egyptians, uh, young archaeologists are helping in the excavations process or even in the discoveries. So what does this tell you about the, the new generation and their interest and potentials in uh, the field of archaeology? You know, at, at the beginning, this is our heritage. So we have to keep, to respect, and to conserve it for a long time for our different generation later. So at the beginning, this field started by the, the French uh, archaeologists and the travelers and uh, uh, who came to, they came at this time to take what they like and they took it to, mainly to Europe, England, and in Germany, Belgium, and France. But when they start after they solve, or Champollion succeeded to solve this, uh, the hieroglyphic inscription, uh, so we can say that the uh, Egyptology started. And from this point, we start to know the hieroglyphics, we start to know the inscriptions, what does it mean, a lot of information about the ancient Egyptian from reliefs, we can explain it, we can know what it, what it means. Uh, by the time, uh, till uh, Mariette he became the head of the Egyptian antiquities and was called Ma'mur, uh, so Khidiwi uh, Said, Said Basha, he was the Ma'mur of the uh, antique. Uh, mm. uh, so after this time we can find uh, Egyptians start to involve in this work by, because they need the Egyptian to keep the, the, the monuments, to store it. So, they, but so the Egyptians start to have experience by time, generation after generation, till uh, about the beginning of the 50s, from the last century, we find the Egyptian start, Ahmed Kamal Basha, start to have a big name in the field. So Egyptians also start to involve in the work time by time or step by step. Uh, so at the last uh, 20 years, we have um, uh, uh, a very important uh, uh, part happened that they involve young Egyptians uh, in the work of the field, uh, especially in the excavation, how to make excavation, conservation, uh, everything. Uh, con related to the site to, from the beginning to its end. Uh, before this time, we, uh, 
we will uh, uh, have the, 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 the foreign missions which made all of this work. But by this time, uh, Egypt started to, uh, to make uh, trainers or training for, uh, in this field. Uh, even we have in the SCA, we have uh, an, an administration for training for conservation and for uh, archaeological work, uh, survey, everything like this. So now we have a lot, even uh, now we have uh, missions here still uh, working here with uh, headed by Egyptian, young Egyptian archaeologists. We have many examples here in Saqqara still working here. And also we have many generations also start, they continue to learn and to, uh, to have new techniques and new technology using in the field. Wonderful to know. And um, I would like to ask you also again about the challenges that um, are being faced uh, today from your perspective. I mean, there is global challenges such as the pandemic, for instance. Um, how has that slowed down processes of uh, discoveries or work or kept them the same? Um, what are your perspectives? So pandemics and some temporary uh, circumstances mm. we, we have to deal with it we can't stop the work we have to deal with, uh, with the circum circumstances around us so uh, like we have uh, you know the coronavirus we didn't stop the work but we have some regulation to make to continue the work and keeping uh, the health of everyone so thank you very much mr mahmoud chaban north Sahara chief inspector thank you for joining us thank here you very much it's been a great pleasure sir welcome. thank you thank you, thank you. and um, we're still here at M M Hotib uh, museum in Sahara. and to know more about the different chambers that holds uh, in this museum we'll be back right after this report